Hey guys, have you ever wondered how the ultra wealthy invest their money? A new global report that's just come out may actually surprise you. This report by Knight Frank has looked at, globally has looked at more than 500 asset managers and wealth managers and private banks that manage collectively, it says here, $2.5 trillion in assets. And they've asked these guys a bunch of questions on how their clients go about investing their money. Now, we're fully aware that most of our audience are not ultra wealthy, but this gives us a bit of a global picture, and let's just say a sneak peek mm -hmm. into what the wealthy invest their money in. Yeah, and of course, everyone's way of investing their money will be different. Their asset classes and their asset allocation will be different, driven by their own individual goals. But I believe we're gonna learn so much from today's session, aren't we? It's gonna be good. Yeah, all right, let's dive into it, right? And uh, by the way, if you're enjoying today's video, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, show some love, show some support for the work that goes on here on our channel. All right, we're gonna be looking at our phones. We've got lots of charts to look at, right? Oh. So our very first one is the portfolio makeup of mm -hmm. these ultra high net worth individuals, which are people who are worth more than $30 million, right? And there are hundreds of thousands of these people around the world, okay? Shockingly, right? So up on this screen is the portfolio makeup of the, on average, what proportion of their total wealth and where it's allocated to. Mm -hmm. So we want to see you guys react in the comments actually, because a lot of these actually, I guess, surprised us looking at it. A little. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I was surprised that there was more investment um, pushed towards homes. But then, you know, primary and secondary homes. But then when you think about 32%. it, it makes, it makes sense. It mm -hmm. makes sense because, yeah. People's money. With, with equities, you know, your investments can go up and down, it fluctuates, but with property, you know, house prices, you know, they, they do go up slightly and, and reduce slightly, but it's more stable, I'd say, than mm -hmm. investing in the stock market. Mm -hmm. so, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you've said there. And it's yeah. interesting. I think what stood out for me actually mm. was just how much property there was. So they've got a 30% primary and secondary homes. Then if you look at the third asset allocation, it's 21% allocated property. to commercial property. So you've got there 53% yeah. to property alone. Even before you've looked at other areas of property, if you, if mm -hmm. you keep looking down, it says there, commercial property indirectly through funds. So there's more property, again, another 8% of property, so 53% plus another 8%. And then 5% in REITs, yeah, free REITs. Yeah, exactly. Real yeah. estate investment trusts. And if you don't know what those are, a link below and above to our detailed video on what that's about. What yeah, else stood out for you? a high proportion. Um, also, what stood out to me was the 2% allocation towards crypto investments. Mm. So I thought the wealthy would be a bit more... Um, Less risk averse? I don't mm. know. Because two percent is quite small. Yeah. We know people with hundred percent of their investments in crypto. So which is insane. Is, which is obviously I think we don't insane. recommend that. Our recommendation we've always said to put at least five no maximum, maximum of five percent towards mm -hmm. crypto investments. But it's just mm -hmm. interesting to see that the wealthy only put the ultra wealthy only put two percent mm -hmm. towards yeah, that was surprising to me. What about yourself? Do you know what the other one was yeah. actually investment of passion, which is the third one from the below. Yeah. Five percent so investment into arts, cars, mm. wines and stuff. We're gonna to come to that yeah. in a moment. But just shifting gears quickly up on the screen, in case you wondered what that picture looked like by region. Mm -hmm. So the question they asked their clients was of your, inv your client's investable wealth, what proportion is allocated to each of the, the following? So outside the investable wealth is outside of like their primary residence and stuff like that. And as you can see, you know, the global average is the last column at the end there. Mm -hmm. And then they've allocated it by, by region. And if you look at Europe, for example, so let's assume the UK, that, that represents the UK. You can see there that 28% of the, the wealth of people in Europe goes towards equities. And 33% for the Americans goes towards equities. But what about the African economy? What was the biggest number there? Yeah, so for Africa, the biggest number was bonds. Hmm, interest. Like, oh. Actually, commercial property, 26% oh, and sorry. then bonds. Yeah, they're similar, properties, similar. Yeah, commercial properties and then bonds. So I think that's quite a high allocation towards bonds, personally. 
And I wonder if that's maybe because it's just different investing in Africa. In in I, I don't know. But. Maybe they pay, they just pay higher coupons, maybe higher higher mm. returns on bonds. Maybe I believe that might be why. Because mm. I've had people hit hit us up for various kind of bond type investments in Nigeria and places mm. like that. You know, I think that might be ah, that might be why. So, so okay, I see that makes sense. But in Asia, you can see again the the highest proportion. Interestingly, it's twenty six percent. I was actually in pretty surprised. Yeah, in equities, I was pretty surprised about that. What did you that. think it would be? Um, I don't know. I just see. yeah, I would have thought there might be, or maybe it's maybe it's Asians in the UK. I would have expected high pro, uh, yeah, property yeah, proportion, yeah, as yeah. as we yeah. know, is yeah. the biggest allocation. Yeah. But this is a global a global, global picture. Shifting gears now. Yeah. So the ultimate goals of the high net worth individuals are essentially capital appreciation. So 31% of the asset allocation goes towards capital appreciation, followed by 26% in capital preservation. In terms of their goals. In terms That's of what their they goals. want to do. 23% mm -hmm. um, towards income generation mm -hmm. and only 14% towards diversification. Oh, yes. Do you then, see the 6%? 6%, on here? yeah, I almost missed it. On impact investing and philanthropy. Okay, so that tells us basically that even though they're super wealthy, mm. they're looking to see their capital appreciate even more. Something yeah. we can learn from that. Really, really yeah. interesting. Mm. It says for those investing in property, mm. they also ask what sectors are they focusing on the most? So up on the screen, guys, uh, you can see that for those in property, to the right, you can see that 43% are focusing on offices mm -hmm. as a property type. Next is industrial and, re and, and logistics and then residential. Mm -hmm. So residential is almost like mid-level. Yeah. Mid and to the left of that diagram, you can see that the fourth largest um, almost allocation was focused on residential property. Which asset class is considered the safest to invest in according to the ultra wealthy? And so they thought that residential property hmm. was considered the safest wow. asset class. Yep, so they ranked it number one number in one. terms of safest and the least volatile. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting though, that yeah. ranks that they consider that to be even safer than investing in gold mm -hmm. or even bonds. bonds. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's really, really interesting. Obviously, cryptocurrencies they consider to be the most risky or the least the least, the least safe, safe asset. I guess the yeah. most volatile. The most volatile. Which we, which we all know. Yeah. And it is interesting, actually, tied to that one that you... Mm. Actually, it's tied to another question we, that, that, that they were asked, which is, on average, how do you expect your client's total wealth to change in the year, mm -hmm. right? And it's interesting looking by region, again, up on the screen, you can see the global average on the end. Mm -hmm. But they've said there that most people... The first question was, to, would you expect it to increase significantly? So mm -hmm. above 10% in terms of your total wealth. Yeah. Look at Europe, 20% mm -hmm. expected the, uh, an increase of more than 10%. Mm -hmm. But look at Africa. 50%. 50%. Wow. 50% of the wealthy, oh. ultra wealthy in Africa. Yeah expected their 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 wealth to increase significantly mm. that tells That's us something really interesting that might tell us something about where we may want to be pointing our money mm -hmm. yeah that tells us something and if you look at increase marginally america was 57 percent that was highest then europe mm -hmm. then asia and then africa mm -hmm. all right let's talk about something fun what's the next one so would you love to know where the ultra rich sorry put their luxury investments into. So mm. let's look at this source. So uh, on this table, we're gonna put it up on the screen. In 2023, nearly six in 10 ultra wealthy said that they plan to purchase art. Six in 10, followed by watches, which was 46%, and followed by wine 30, at 39%, global average, followed by classic cars, mm. which is 34%. What surprised me though was rare whiskey bottles. I mean, I'm not a drinker, so I, wow. would, I wouldn't know. Yeah, that but I, I didn't know that it? that was like a luxury type of you know item that appreciates in value. Look where coloured diamonds comes in though. Coloured diamonds was right at the bottom. Yeah, at nine percent. Nine percent, and that's it. And remember, guys, remember that what Mary introduced there, that what they've called their passions, mm. yeah, was they allocated. Remember that first screenshot we had? They had they had allocated only 5% of their total net worth yeah. 
to these investments of passion. Mm. Yeah. So remember that. That's actually pretty important. Mm -hmm. Only five percent of their money, of their yeah. wealth, went to this, and then out of that, we then, you know, you've then said the most went to art and that kind of stuff. And what this made me think about actually was, you know, how like social media and stuff like mm -hmm. that. A lot of people want to look rich, basically. Yeah. They want to have all these things. Yeah. But quite a lot of their actual wealth then goes towards purchasing these items these to the point items. where, like, if they don't work out, yeah. They stand to, it's such a huge blow for people because a lot of, mm. a huge proportion of their wealth is allocated to these areas. But mm -hmm. the ultra wealthy only allocated 5% on average. 5%. So imagine if you were ever, I mean, to see, get a sneak peek into the house of an ultra rich person. All the stuff that you see mm -hmm. in their property, furniture, all of their watches, furniture, bags, whatever, that's just 5% really of their actual wealth hmm. that's tied into those physical goods it's interesting and i should mention by the way this yeah. this this clip we're looking at here this screenshot comes uh courtesy of uh visual capitalist uh which is where we got that fact from uh, that particular fact from and they say that many of these passion uh investments many of these items retain their value over time mm. in fact all 10 of these items increased in value over 2022 despite a challenging economic environment which saw the S&P 500 fall over 19%. Mm -hmm. So the rich got even richer. They got even richer. Even with their passion yeah. investments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that period. Exactly, exactly. But what's interesting is this diagram here where it shows those passion investments by location. Mm. Um, and I'm guessing it assumes that art retains its value more hmm. than all the other assets so they asked the question they said which are the following investments of passion are your clients likely to purchase mm -hmm. this year i think looking at that i was just going to say that in europe it says that 73 percent uh they had the highest proportion again as we expect europeans art and they all this it. stuff yeah, right they yeah. love all that stuff however interesting that we look at africa mm. classic cars yeah classic cars mm. was actually the most likely purchase in terms of investment. And you, then you look at America, America follows, you know, or Europe follows America and vi or vice versa. Again, quite similar patterns there. When you look at say... With America, wine and classic cars were, were similar, similar percentages, 43%, mm. which was interesting. And you look at the Middle East, I, I always find it interesting to look at that. The Middle East was watches. Mm. Watches ranked the highest for at that part of the world and Asia was a joint art and watches. Mm. Given the economic and interest rates environment in 2023, what do you intend to do with the following? 47% hmm. of the ultra rich said that they wanted to increase their investment portfolio. 46% um, of them wanted to increase their cash reserves. 39% hmm. wanted to increase their travel overseas. 36% um, wanted personal expenditure so that social activities cultural activities and dining mm -hmm. etc um in terms of business operations that was 34 percent 32 percent of them said they wanted to increase their holdings of residential properties and what was interesting about that is uh -huh. that 47 percent going on that line of residential property mm -hmm. said no change mm. so that you know they're not changing anything they're waiting to see yeah. from a property perspective, residential property perspective. Mm. But 32% wanted to increase. But sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the highest percentage of no change, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to just highlight that. Yeah. 28% mm -hmm. said that they wanted to increase their holdings of commercial property. And 27% said that they wanted to they wanted to increase their level of debt. And that so says a lot, because obviously the wealthy people use that to, to, mm. to acquire more assets, which is almost the same number across the board in terms of people who want to increase versus decrease versus no change in the level of debt that they've got. Um, now, I found this particular one really interesting where it says, what will be the main reason behind your next residential property purchase? 45% of the respondents said it will be for investment purposes. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They're right? still investing more. That's really, I find yeah. that so fascinating. Yeah. When well, you're an ultra, ultra high net worth individuals, uh -huh. there's still a lot of effort, like mm. attention mm. paid towards making sure that your money is working. 
Yeah. I find that really, really interesting. Uh, and then 21% said lifestyle, 16% said safe haven. So they're seeing property as a safe haven. Mm -hmm. And then the others were job relocation and then education, education. 8%. What's our last one? They asked, which of these statements below most closely corresponds with your views on the role of NFTs as works of art? Mm. And surprisingly, okay. 34% said that they believe the NFT art market still has a lot of potential. Hmm. So there's still hope for those of you who purchase a lot of NFTs. I saw a thing on, I don't know what, I think it might well, be Forbes. Anyway, it's a lot like saying a lot of NFTs are completely worthless. Don't quote me on completely that. worthless at the moment. Yeah. But, you know, again, don't, again, exactly that. Don't quote us on that. But that's just, uh, it, it seems conflicting to me. Mm. There's you know, a lot of body of research saying actually they're not worth much. They're just completely worthless, yeah. hyped up rubbish. Yeah. And then th there are very, very wealthy people to which you've said 34% of the respondents mm. believe that there's still a lot of potential. Yeah. But then you also have 32% that said they've never had any confidence in NFTs. Hmm. And then you had 20% said that they're open-minded. They were open-minded until ah. the crypto crash. Okay. Um, and then 12% said they have no idea <laughs> what it's an like, NFT is. NF what? <laughs> <laughs> That's like most people. To be it's honest. like, what is an NFT? Anyway. <laughs> Do you know what an NFT is? We, you non fungible tokens. Yeah, yeah. We, anyway, even if you know what it actually what stands that for, mean, like, though? what does it actually mean? <laughs> anyway, we thought this would be a really interesting video to make. The research, obviously, at the, the report, we'll link to below. You can go and read more about it. It goes into so many more areas, but we chose those areas because we thought they were really insightful and will speak to us. Us. you know a lot of us who are like you know kind of starting out yeah. it might hopefully inspire us in our walk in, in helping us almost assess as well like for example that first chart these guys allocated their money to 11 different places yeah. you might think these people only allocate to like two places like equities and property but like mm -hmm. or their business but they've got it in all these different areas so we just thought those percentages might help us to really reassess our positions relative to our goals and that kind of stuff and our personal circumstances in order to just help us think of wealth in a different way long term okay absolutely we hope you guys found this useful like ken said insightful a bit of a sneak peek into the way that they do things mm. and let us know in the comment section what stood out to you what surprised you about this report let us know in the comments let's have a chat other than that guys thank you so much for watching do share this video with someone who you think will find it useful too like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and as always guys in all, all things, things be thankful, thankful and, and seek joy, joy. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye.